Video footage appears to show Russian military forces being moved en masse to the border with North Korea as the world edges closer to World War III. Russia has reportedly moved weapons towards Vladivostok, just eight miles from the border with North Korea. The city is within striking distance of Kim Jong-un secretive state. Although unconfirmed by the Russian government, the movement of tanks and missiles was spotted by terrified people living in the border city and posted on social media. According to reports, the military convoy caught on camera included eight surface-to-air missiles, all part of Russian air defense. Vladimir Putin already has a major navy base in Vladivostok. The threat comes after warnings from top experts that North Korea will have as many as 60 nuclear weapons in just three years, unless urgent action is taken. Kim Jong-un has already warned North Korea is prepared for all-out war with the U.S. In retaliation, footage of U.S. warplanes preparing for battle was released as a chilling warning to the tubby tyrant. Donald Trump is said to be preparing to strike amid growing tensions over North Korea's nuclear weapons. The U.S. president appears to be ramping up his military capabilities after dropping a massive ordnance air blast bomb on ISIS tunnels in Afghanistan last week. But since the emergence of the Vladivostok footage, fears have grown that North Korea could become the trigger for a conflict involving the U.S., China, and Russia. Both China and Russia consider North Korea as a necessary buffer state, which they need to keep stable for their own national security. It comes just days after Rex Tillerson, U.S. Secretary of State, said relations between Washington and Moscow are at an all-time low point. China has pleaded for the U.S. and North Korea to back down. On Friday, China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi warned that conflict could break out at any moment. He said, We call on all parties to refrain from provoking and threatening each other and not to let the situation get to an irreversible and unmanageable stage. Russia has reportedly moved the weapons towards Vladivostok, just eight miles from the border with North Korea. The city is within striking distance of Kim Jong-un's secretive state. And Russia and China have reportedly sent ships to shadow a U.S. fleet sent to threaten North Korea. But reports suggest the U.S.'s boats are 3,500 miles off course. Although unconfirmed by the Russian government, the movement of tanks and missiles was spotted by terrified people living in the border city and posted on social media. According to reports, the military convoy caught on camera included eight surface-to-air missiles, all part of Russian air defense. Vladimir Putin already has a major navy base in Vladivostok. The threat comes after warnings from top experts that North Korea will have as many as 60 nuclear weapons in just three years, unless urgent action is taken. Kim Jong-un has already warned North Korea is prepared for all-out war with the U.S. In retaliation, footage of U.S. warplanes preparing for battle was released as a chilling warning to the Tubby tyrant. Donald Trump is said to be preparing to strike on the growing tensions over North Korea's nuclear weapons. The U.S. president appears to be ramping up his military capabilities after dropping a massive ordnance air blast bomb Moab, on ISIS tunnels in Afghanistan last week. But since the emergence of the Vladivostok footage, fears have grown that North Korea could become the trigger for a conflict involving the U.S., China and Russia. Both China and Russia consider North Korea as a necessary buffer state, which they need to keep stable for their own national security. It comes just days after Rex Tillerson, U.S. Secretary of State, said relations between Washington and Moscow are at an all-time low point. China has pleaded for the U.S. and North Korea to back down. On Friday, China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi warned that conflict could break out at any moment. He said, we call on all parties to refrain from provoking and threatening each other and not to let the situation get to an irreversible and unmanageable stage. Meanwhile, Vice President of the U.S., Mike Pence, has threatened North Korea with an overwhelming response if Kim Jong-un uses nuclear weapons. And terrified U.S. citizens are building nuclear bunkers in response to the threat of all-out war with Kim Jong-un. North Korea is issuing a new threat to the U.S., warning of a, quote, super mighty preemptive strike. This comes after Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said the White House was looking to put more pressure on the regime. This is a constantly developing story minute by minute. What is the latest? 
You're right, Shannon. There seems to be a lot of back and forth at the moment as the U.S. and their allies consistently say that the North Korean regime must change its ways. The regime continues to threaten these attacks. And as you say today, they have threatened a super mighty preemptive strike, saying that they could immediately wipe out U.S. forces in South Korea and also strike the U.S. mainland, reducing them to ashes. Their provocations now seem to be ratcheting up. But Secretary Tillerson, his response was as measured as ever. We're reviewing all the status of North Korea, both in terms of state sponsorship of terrorism, as well as all the other ways in which we can bring pressure to bear on the regime in Pyongyang. So no let up from North Korea, but continued pressure from the administration to try and solve this awful solution, this awful problem. Shannon? Okay, so China, obviously, Benjamin, a key player here. The president's talked a lot about our growing role with them, his chemistry with their top leader. Mm. What does that country now have to say about how this is playing out? You know, Shannon, there's been sort of mixed signals from them. Of course, China has a relationship with North Korea. They have done for some time, and that's not going to change overnight. But they are getting frustrated with the regime. You know, the U.S. has a pretty good relationship with China on this at the moment, as seen with Trump's meeting with the president in Mar-a-Lago. But the Chinese say they are opposed to any U.S. unilateral sanctions and action in Korea. And they've also said that at the moment, they continue normal relations, including normal business contacts, with the rogue state. Meanwhile, the U.S. and South Korea continued joint exercises named Max Thunder to serve as a deterrence as tensions mount. About 100 aircraft, including F-16s, took part in the drills aimed at checking the Air Force's air battle and surgical strike capabilities in an emergency situation. So very tense situations in the Korean Peninsula, but the U.S. still saying the era of strategic patience is over. All options remain on the table. We are seeking peace not begging for it. We will defend the peace and security of our nation by our own might. Our army is at a state of maximum alert to respond to the U.S. military build-up. If we notice any sign of assault on our sovereignty, our army will launch merciless military strikes against the U.S. aggressors wherever they may exist, from the remote U.S. lands to the U.S. military bases in the Korean Peninsula, like those of Japan and elsewhere. The recent U.S. maneuvers and the previous ones, which the U.S. keeps saying are annual defensive routines, have revealed the hostile intentions of the U.S. Those moments fall within the scenario of preemptive strikes that are directly targeting our supreme command and strategic positions, like our missile and nuclear capabilities. The new Trump administration should look to the world with open eyes. The time of dictating orders by brandishing the U.S. military might has gone. If those businessmen in power in the U.S. thought they could intimidate us with military or sanction threats, as the Obama administration used to do and failed, they will soon find out such threats are useless. Unless the U.S. abandons its hostile policies against North Korea, there will be no chance for any future bilateral meetings at any level. It is a prerequisite that Washington gives up those antagonistic policies against us. The six-party talks aimed at making the Korean Peninsula free of nuclear weapons were throttled at birth. They no longer exist. The nuclear weapon in our possession is not an illusion. It is not a commodity that can be traded for American dollars, nor is it for sale. So it cannot be put on the negotiating table with the aim of taking it away from us. The United States of America will always seek peace, but under President Trump, the shield stands guard and the sword stands ready. Rest assured, under President Trump's leadership, the United States will continue to protect our people and our allies and to strengthen the bonds between us today, tomorrow, and every day that follows. History will attest the soldier does not bear the sword in vain. And those who would challenge our resolve or our readiness should know. We will defeat any attack and meet any use of conventional or nuclear weapons with an overwhelming and effective American response. Part of the response to the increase in provocation from Pyongyang was supposed to be the deployment of another U.S. carrier and its supporting ships. Just over a week ago, the U.S. government implied that the ships were on their way to the Korean Peninsula. We are sending an armada 
Very powerful. We have submarines. Very powerful. Far more powerful than the aircraft carrier, that I can tell you. The problem is that it actually wasn't at that time. New York Times revealed that when Trump and a number of officials made the claim, U.S. carrier Carl Vinson, along with three other warsh warships, were in fact heading to the opposite direction to take part in joint exercise with the Australian Navy in the Indian Ocean. And that blip could have stayed unnoticed if the Navy itself did not post a picture of the vessel last Saturday, saying it was made while Carl Vinson was passing through Sunda Strait off the coast of Indonesia. The, ultimate, the untimely and uncoordinated announcement sent a lot of blushes onto the faces of the Pentagon officials, but now the White House says their armada is finally headed to the Sea of Japan. I believe that he might have spoken too quickly on this uh, location of the vessel um, no, before it was actually President arriving. said we have an armada going towards the peninsula. That's a fact. It happened. It is happening, rather. It was announced that it was going. It will be there. Um, we were asked simply a question on that. I think all other questions should be asked of the Department of Defense. John but in Pyongyang, the propaganda continues. State television aired footage of a musical performance to mark the birthday of the late founding father, Kim Il-sung. His grandson and the current leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, attended the show. It ended with mock footage of missiles flying over the Pacific, striking the United States and engulfing it in flames. Meanwhile, an amateur video footage filmed in the Russian Far East went viral online, showing redeployment of Russian troops onto the border with North Korea. The Kremlin said through its spokesperson Dmitry Peskov on Monday that only a coordinated international effort would be the right way to solve the Korean crisis peacefully, noting at the same time that Moscow was highly concerned with what was happening on the Russian Far Eastern border. Мы не приемлем ядерные ракетные авантюрные действия Пхеньяна в нарушении многочисленных резолюций Совета Безопасности ООН, но это отнюдь не означает, что можно таким же образом нарушать международные права, применяя силу. Я очень надеюсь, что односторонних действий, наподобие тех, которых мы видели вот недавно в Сирии, не будет. И что Соединенные Штаты будут следовать той линии, которую президент Трамп неоднократно озвучивал в период своей предвыборной кампании. The same notion has been voiced by Beijing. So things may have calmed down a little bit for now, but the situation can hardly be described as stable. The U.S. fleet is expected to arrive by the coast of the Korean Peninsula early next week. To the members of the Security Council, I must say, enough is enough. Nuclear powers understand their responsibilities. Kim Jong-un shows no such understanding. His abusive use of missiles and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. War is never something the United States wants. We don't want it now. But our country's patience is not unlimited. What we've heard uh, from Haley is nothing new, actually. Only yesterday, the U.S. Defense Secretary uh, Jim Mattis said that Washington will use any means necessary to defend itself from North Korea. Um, Washington has been threatening military action for weeks, and the rhetoric, rhetoric has been growing stronger and stronger uh, since the beginning of August when Trump threatened DPRK with uh, fire and fury. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't uh, go beyond threats. Uh, but at the same time, Washington hasn't really proposed a viable solution, uh, except for sanctions, which uh, Russia and China, however, have been calling for uh, North Korea to return to dialogue. A comprehensive settlement to the nuclear and other issues plaguing the Korean Peninsula can be arrived at solely through political and diplomatic channels. We reiterate our readiness to help this process via the implementation of the initiative proposed by Russia and China. A comprehensive settlement to the nuclear and other issues plaguing the Korean Peninsula can be arrived at solely through political and diplomatic channels. We reiterate our readiness to help this process by the implementation of the initiative proposed by Russia and China. China and Russia have proposed an initiative for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. It is practical and feasible and aimed at easing the tensions and preventing further escalation. 
Uh, Moscow and Beijing has proposed a roadmap uh, for settling the crisis, uh, calling for a freeze on uh, North Korea's uh, nuclear tests and uh, 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 and U.S. and South Korea's drills. Uh, the double freeze initiative uh, for North Korea has been proposed by uh, China and Russia, which would require North Korea to, to stop its nuclear and ballistic missile tests. And in return, the U.S. and South Korea would stop their military drills. Uh, this is a move that Washington considers to be offensive. The idea that some have suggested a so-called freeze for freeze is insulting. So it looks like for now the situation is in a deadlock, at least until Washington decides that threats and sanctions are counterproductive.